are hereby called to the annual meeting of the Westbrook Warren Congregational Church, UCC, on Sunday, January 24, 2021, on Zoom at 1130, following the morning online worship. Information to access the Zoom meeting will be posted on our website, www.westbrookwarren.com. The purpose of the meeting is to review the annual reports of the boards and committees, act on the budget, and any other business that may come before this meeting. I post this notice on the front door of the church two weeks prior to the meeting. Darlene Varian, Church Clerk. Good morning and welcome to worship at Westbrook Warren Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in Westbrook, Maine. We're delighted to have you join us for worship this Sunday, which is the first Sunday in Epiphany. So won't you come worship God with me? What a week. Careworn and weary from the journey, we have come this morning to worship and adore you, O oh God. We have come, perhaps tentatively so, to give homage to your Son, and if only for a little while, to bask in your glory. Shine your light upon us, O oh God. May that same light shine in and through, around and over each one of us. May the flame of your spirit be kindled anew within us, that we might offer you our heartfelt praise, O King of Kings, O Prince of Peace, O Emmanuel. For we ask this as we join in one spirit, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in the heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Psalm 29, and it's a David psalm. Bravo, God, bravo. Gods and all angels shout, encore. In awe before the glory, in awe before God's visible power, stand at attention. Dress your best to honor him. God thunders across the waters, brilliant, his voice and his face streaming brightness. God across the floodwaters, God's thunder tympanic, 
God's thunder symphonic. God's thunder smashes cedars. God topples the northern cedars. The mountain ranges skip like spring colts. The high ridges jump like wild kid goats. God's thunder spits fire. God's thunder, the wilderness quakes. He makes the desert of Kadash shake. God's thunder sets the oak trees dancing, a wild dance whirling. The pelting rain strips their branches. We fall to our knees and we call out glory. Above the floodwaters is God's throne from which his power flows, from which he rules the world. God makes his people strong. God gives his people peace. Today we're going to, uh, we begin this season of uh, Epiphany and we're going to become, begin a series called Finding Meaning and Gaining Purpose. So as we seek to find Emmanuel with us, we will be also simultaneously finding meaning and gaining purpose. Today's gospel lesson comes to us from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 through 11, and I'm reading from the message. It goes like this. John the baptizer appeared in the wild, preaching a baptism of life change that leads to forgiveness of sins. People thronged to him from Judea and Jerusalem, and as they confessed their sins were baptized by him in the Jordan River into a changed life. John wore a camel hair habit, tied at the waist with a leather belt. He ate locust and wild honey. As he preached, he said, the real action comes next. The star in this drama, to whom I'm a mere stagehand, will change your life. I'm baptizing you here in the river, turning your old life in for a kingdom life. His baptism, a baptism, a holy baptism by the Holy Spirit will change you from the inside out. At this time, Jesus came from Nazareth to Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. The moment he came out of the water, he saw the sky split open and God's spirit looking like a dove come down on him. Along with the spirit a voice, you are my son, chosen and marked by my love, pride of my life. My friends, this is the good news. Hear it and believe. Today's sermon title, which interestingly enough was chosen a couple of weeks ago before the events of this past week, is called Turning Points. It's the first in an epiphany series that we will be um, hearing called Finding Meaning and Gaining Perspective. I think one of the one of the many challenges in this during this past year has been to maintain a sense of purpose and meaning in our lives. And so I thought we'd sit with that during this uh, season really of revelation. So my hope for you during the season of Epiphany, even as physical, political, and social dis-ease wreak havoc, on our planet, we as individuals and as a community, a community of faith, I might add, must stay open to revelation and take seriously our baptismal vows. 
we're also called to hold fast to our faith, a faith that enables us to find meaning and to gain perspective. For if we're going to get through this turning point in the history of the world, and we will get through it, we need to lean on the everlasting arms of Jesus Christ. What are those lyrics? What a fellowship, what a joy to find, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blisslessness, what a peace of mind, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning. I know, you missed my voice, I know you did. I digress. Yes, this is a turning point in our individual and collective lives. And at this point in history, this turning point, we must lean on the everlasting arms of Jesus Christ, whom we encounter today in the scriptures on the banks of the River Jor Jordan. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, the author states this, In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and I've lost my place, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah in the wilderness. That's the backdrop from another perspective on this turning point in history. Keep in mind that Tiberius Caesar Augustus was the second Roman emperor. And prior to becoming emperor, one of Rome's greatest generals, Tiberius had a reputation for being dark and somewhat reclusive which gave prophets like John a foothold in that region, which in turn increased social and political divisions and unrest within the community. So much so that years later, or not too long later, he was beheaded. As these baptisms by John took place, they became within the culture a turning point. However, the baptism of Jesus that we encounter today not only served as a turning point in Jesus' life as he was propelled out into the world to minister to the world, it was also a turning point in the history of the world because baptism by water and spirit became not just a thing that, was John, that John was doing, but it became a thing that marked people as followers of the living Christ. Now we too are experiencing a turning point in our lives as we face fearsome forces that seek to divide and destroy us and those things that we have stood for for most of our lives. The world has faced these kinds of forces before. We've seen it throughout history. One of the most recent came in the last century in which friends and family and neighbors were set against one another. As we remember our own baptisms today, let us also heed these words from one of our ancestors, our brothers in Christ from the 1940s. Martin Niemöller. German theologian, Lutheran pastor, 
follower of Christ said this. First, they came for the socialist. I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionist and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me and there was no one left to speak for me. He also wrote, thus, whenever I meet a Jew known to me before, then, then as a Christian, I cannot tell him, dear friend, I stand in front of you, but we cannot get together for there is guilt between us. I have sinned and my people has my people have sinned against thy people and against thyself. The Holocaust was a turning point in history when crucial systems broke down, when people's faith was compromised, when voices outside, seductive voices, encourage them to forget the principles of their faith set forth by Jesus Christ. So on this Sunday, the first Sunday after Epiphany, as we recall Jesus' baptism, please let us not remember the sentimental kumbaya moment that may have been or may have not been our baptism, but remember instead that being baptized into the body of Christ means being baptized into a new life. And in that new life, we are called to live by an even higher standard, to live, love, forgive, give, worship and heal, not Jews or Gentiles, not slaves or free, but all people, all people under God's glorious son. In this morning's gospel lesson, we witness a turning point in Jesus' life, a moment in which he was born again, a moment that changed his life, that changed his perspective, giving his life new meaning and new purpose. In closing, I'd like to share these words from the late Victor Frankl. The last of the human freedoms is to choose one's own attitude in any given set of circumstances to choose one's own way. He says, there were always choices to make every day, every hour, offered the opportunity to make a decision, a decision which determined whether you would or would not submit to those powers which threatened to rob you of your very self, your inner freedom, which determined whether or not you become the plaything to circumstance, renouncing freedom and dignity. My freedom, my freedom, my friends, as we move into this week, whatever it may bring, may each of us live by Jesus' even higher standard to live to love, to give, to forgive, to worship, and to heal the world for which Jesus came. Amen.
Will you join me in the pastoral prayer? Send your Holy Spirit, O God, upon this your creation. Shine your guiding light upon our path that we might discern your will for our lives. Thank you for blessing us with your presence during this time of worship. And we ask your prayers, O oh God, today that your spirit might lead us, each of us as individuals and us as a congregation throughout this new year. Guide our thoughts and decisions. Open our hearts to the movement of your spirit. Loosen our grip on those things that we cannot control and inspire us, O oh God, to do your work where we can. We ask for your wisdom, for your strength, for your power to be, that we might be more present and more authentic in how we live our lives. We pray to for our judicial system, for our law enforcement officers, for our first responders and the healthcare professionals. We pray for the leaders of this world. We pray for the many, many people whose lives have been impacted by COVID-19. We pray for the thousands, millions of people who are experiencing economic hardship as fallout from this disease. We pray too for our friends and family and ask that you grant them health and protection in this new year. May your angels surround them and keep them physically and spiritually well. We pray for the children of this congregation and for children around the world trying to make sense of everything that they're seeing and living through. We pray that you would give discernment and insight beyond our years to us that we might understand your will, hear your voice and know your ways. Holy God, until that day when we are reunited with you and all the company in heaven, we offer you these, our prayers. Amen. Open to the revelation of God being at work and alive in our world. Let us take a moment to give as we are able to the work of Christ in our world. Well, here I am at the church downstairs. Many of you will recognize the mural behind me, um, but what you may be less acquainted with is my friend Jesus here. Uh, during this season of Epiphany, Jesus is going to be kind of showing us, if you will, how God is at work in our community. And this week, I wanted to lift up one of the uh, exciting things that our Christian education group has done. Uh, they were challenged uh, to do a reverse Advent food collection for the food pantry. And uh, all these goodies will be going to the feed, food pantry to feed our friends in Westbrook that are so desperately in need. 
So during the next several weeks, during, during this time of epiphany, when we are all out there searching for signs of God with us, you will see my friend Jesus out there doing the work of God in a variety of ways. So do stay tuned. And now my friends go forth and be of good courage. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, loving and serving God in Jesus Christ today and always. Amen.